You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves. There's one thing for sure, and that's that the budget this year is bottomless. Directors do listen to us, and legendary superhero movies are coming back reminiscent of their golden age might. It's also a popular year for biographies, both the violent destroyer of the worlds and the slightly less violent kind. 2023's best, most creative, and highest grossing movies are right here. So welcome to See Next. Today we're ranking the top 10 best movies of 2023 so far. Get your popcorn ready, set, and let's go. Yeah, she sounded like a leader. I do? Oh, I do! Oh, I sound like such a leader. And you ruined it. Number 10, Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. Your dad got his promotion. Yeah, isn't that great? And we found this great house. Oh, the best Where? house, the best house. Well, that's the thing. We we got really lucky. Based on a novel by Judy Bloom in 1970, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret is about Margaret Simon, a sixth grader who's having an existential crisis. Margaret is a whirlpool of tugging hands towards the good side, towards the bad side, and vice versa. You have different generations and different perspectives. This movie is not just about religion, despite what the title suggests. It's a journey of self-discovery, of one's identity, role, growing up, and more, wrapped in a clever comedy. Let me just be normal and regular like everybody else. Just please, 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 please. Number nine, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. We're brothers, we fight together. We're just getting started. The world's favorite quadruplets are back at it again, but this time for the first time in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 40 year long history. They're actually voiced by actual teenagers. A crime syndicate throws our hero's dream of being accepted as mundane teenagers into the wind when they release an army of mutants on them. Joining Raphael, Michelangelo, Donatello, Leonardo, and April O'Neil, played by Ayo Edebiri. Remember, don't let any human see you. Hey! Number eight, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. The orifice? I'll go lost. Chris Pine and Dungeons and Dragons are words you never thought would belong in the same gasp, right? So imagine if Ocean's Eleven met Lord of the Rings and they decided to play a game of Dungeons and Dragons. That's pretty much what you get with Honor Among Thieves. The film brings together a group of unlikely heroes who are forced to work together to pull off a heist with life-changing implications. But this is not your typical heist movie. The players are not just in it for the money. They are fighting for a noble cause and believe they are performing a service to their community. Plus, they have to contend with all sorts of classic D&D monsters and challenges, like dodge traps or dodge dragons. He missed. No, oh, that's not good. Number seven, Barbie. Sir, I am Closer, I am She's Barbie. He's just Ken, who had a crisis when he found out the patriarchy wasn't about horses. For what seemed like a few months there, Margot Robbie as Barbie and Ryan Gosling as Ken were everywhere. With the insane billion dollar worth of marketing, Barbie could have been overhyped, but it somehow lives up to everything it promised and more. And it will leave you still laughing while walking out of the movie theater, especially with the last scene. This Barbie is malfunctioning, and Weird Barbie, played by the iconic Kate McKinnon, tells her that she has to go to the human world. Ken follows, and comedies ensue. They battle the patriarchy, humans, and expectations society places on women and men. Oh, and America Ferrara's monologue about being a woman? Oscar worthy. Just one appendectomy. But I'm a man. But not a doctor. Can I talk to a doctor? You are talking to a doctor. Can I need a clicky pen? No. A sharp thing? No. There he is. Doctor! Somebody get security. Number six, John Wick, chapter four. You're going to die. Maybe not. At this point, John Wick just wants to go home, but he can't. So he gives us hours of top-notch, edge-of-your-seat content. Chapter 4 promises to take things to even greater heights of suspense and action. And if you thought the body count was high in the previous films, just wait until you see what the writers have in store for the fourth installment. Reeves has promised that Chapter 4 will explore more of Wick's backstory, which should add some depth to the character and make us care even more about his journey. But let's be real, the real draw of John Wick isn't just the action, it's Keanu Reeves. 
The man oozes cool and wholesome, and his portrayal of John Wick is a perfect mix of charm, vulnerability, and sheer badassery. You want to kill him? I want to kill him? <laughs> what about you, Mr. Wick? I'm going to kill you. Number 5. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 We come in peace. Director James Gunn set the stage by saying that Volume 3 will be the biggest and most emotional Guardians movie yet. The latest in the Guardians saga proposes a question, is this the end of the line for the Guardians? This is described as one of the best new Marvel movies. We have the newest edition of Will Poulter as Adam Warlock. Get ready for Rocket's backstory, Quill's manifesting grief, a new Gamora, Nebula accepting her role as a Guardian more than a villain. Finally, the actual villain High Evolutionary, played by Chikwudi Iwuji, is incredible. Whoever it was that you were in love with, it sounds more like her. Her? That's Do ridiculous. not bring me into this. Oh, <laughs> Knock it off! What? Number 4. Killers of the Flower Moon Son, I got a question. You like women? <laughs> That's my weakness. <laughs> Everyone is going crazy over this movie, and for a good reason. Killers of the Flower Moon is hailed as THE Martin Scorsese movie. With a star-studded, actually talented cast like Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro, and a breakout performance from Lily Gladstone, the Killers of the Flower Moon cast might as well clear a shell for its awards already. It's an epic Western crime drama set in 1920s Oklahoma. Specifically, it's about the grotesque battle waged against members of the Osage tribe members after oil was found on their land. And Scorsese? He's on the Osage Nation's side, and stayed true to their culture in a positive light. And hey, the cast includes Brendan Fraser. Expecting a miracle to make all this go away? You know they don't happen anymore. Number 3. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse I'm grounded. Bummer. Whoop. Is Spider-Man grounded? Welcome to the Spider-Verse, and this is just the lobby. There is never going to come a time when the Spider-Verse's immersive, thrilling, and creative animation style doesn't immediately wow us. But the movie is more than visually stunning. We have an all-grown-up Miles Morales, Gwen Stacy, and the multiverse. Without giving too much away, because across the Spider-Verse is an experience, Spider-Man meets Spider-People. When a new threat arises, Miles finds himself on the other side of the fight, against other spiders. The soundtrack alone makes this one of 2023's best action movies. Also, Oscar Isaac and Daniel Kaluuya both voice spiders. Who do you think you are? Really? We are supposed to be the good guys. We are. Number 2. Mission Impossible – Dead Reckoning Part 1 the world is changing. Truth is vanishing. War is coming. A story as old as time. A new weapon threatens life as we know it if it falls into the wrong hands. Who's stopping it? None other than Tom Cruise's Ethan Hunt. But even the skyscraper-leaping, window-jumping hero is starting to doubt whether he can save the world and his loved ones. The most impossible mission yet? AI. This marks the franchise's seventh movie, and luckily for us, they've decided to include remarkable new features. Four words, suit-wearing Haley Atwell. The Impossible Mission Forces also includes Vanessa Kirby and Rebecca Ferguson, as well as Simon Pegg and Ving Rhames. It's also believed Crews might have done more running in Dead Reckoning Part 1 than any other movie. His fate is written. Shall we write yours too? Before we reveal our first pick, let's look at some honorable mentions. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Gran Turismo. If you miss a line in the game, you reset. You miss it on the track, you could die. The Equalizer 3. Whatever it is you and your friends do, do it somewhere else. You warning me? I'm preparing. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And I've been looking for this all my life. The Creator. Sergeant Taylor, we are this close to winning the war. Totally Killer. 
What year is it? 1987. Oh my God. I know. The 80s are almost over and I haven't even tried Coke yet. Talk to me. Talk to me. Wish. My best friend, the king's apprentice. Is my mouth drooping? I feel like it's drooping. The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Welcome to the capital. You look like you shouldn't be here. I shouldn't, but I'm your mentor. A rebel. Number one, Oppenheimer. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. Fans have literally paid millions of dollars as a collective to hear Cillian Murphy utter the haunting words of, I am become death, destroyer of worlds. If Oppenheimer doesn't sweep the Oscars for Murphy's indelible role or for the one jump scare that Blast gave us, then we don't know what will. Watching the first atomic bomb come to life, the politics that came with it, and the sordid affairs in the middle is a once-in-a-lifetime movie. And of course, who could forget about Barbieheimer? Released on the same day, which of these two blockbusters did you see first? And did you or did you not have different paradoxical outfits? You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves. And the world is not prepared. And those are the top 10 best movies of 2023. What did you think? Did we miss one of your favorites? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell below to be notified of new content. Thanks for watching.